3.2 had a bit of a rough start, but the crashing issues have been resolved, and the patch has been re-released. So let's get stuck into it. Firstly, it wouldn't be a squad patch without the AK-74 family of rifles having their gun sounds changed. GL impact sounds for trucks have also been updated. So my thoughts on the sound. There is a definite improvement with the new 74 sounds compared to the last. My only issues with it so far is I believe that the AK-74's automatic gunfire sounds a lot better than its single fire. If you pay attention there is a noticeable difference between the punchiness and bass of the single fire and automatic fire. The single fire sound is a little too punchy than what it should be but it's acceptable. It sounds good and I think it's a good change. However, the close sounds for both single fire and automatic from the third person sounds way too heavy and it sounds like a 762 compared to a 545. I understand this was done to make it easier to differentiate between the M16 and M4s and the AK-74. The new GL impact sounds are also very nice. We get some more air porn, with reverb and sound occlusion being added to more buildings within Black Coast. Previously it was just a few buildings here and there and the sub pen, but now it's been expanded quite a bit. Due to demo replays not recording the reverb and sound occlusion, I can't do a comparison, but here's some live footage. Now to touch on performance. Due to time constraints, I wasn't able to do my own testing, but one of the resident nerds within the official Discord managed to do some benchmarking during V3, and now done it again with V3.2. Now results are going to vary from person to person as it comes down to your settings and your PC configuration, but at most everyone should see more stabilised lows and an increased average frame rate. Unfortunately, don't expect this patch to fix all the FPS issues. They're going to remain present for the foreseeable future until OWI can patch the more hefty issues at hand here. This patch is just the beginning and is a stepping stone and we'll see a lot more in the future. Bruno has given the vehicle deployable smoke visual effects a bit of love. The effects themselves are much more detailed. The effect lasts a lot longer and covers a much wider area. Now there is a bit of a bug or a misconfiguration where the canisters are deployed offset to the left meaning there is a lot more coverage of smoke to the left than there is to the right. Another issue is the smoke canister detonation sounds are not present. You hear them being deployed but you don't hear them puffing open. Aside from the issues, the new smoke effects are bloody awesome. Bruno has knocked it out of the park, he's always done some great visual effects but this new standard that he's setting is very very high. Now this is awesome to see, a long time issue has been finally fixed where if you fire an RPG and put it away, the smoke effects would disappear. The same issue would occur if a vehicle deployed smoke and when it was destroyed the smoke would also disappear. Now we can put these issues behind us and no more ghost AT. Just take note, if you fire the RPG and you put it away, from your perspective it will show that the smoke disappears, but from third person it doesn't. Engineers and sappers and mines have received a buff and a nerf at the same time. The mine count for engineers and sappers has been increased within their inventories. Conventional factions aside from Aussie have increased from 1 to 3 mines. Kit 1 for the Aussie engineer has had its mine count increased from 2 to 4. Its kit 2 inventory still remains the same. Sappers for the irregulars have their mine count increased from 1 to 2. This is mainly because they also get an IED so they get lesser mines than the conventional factions. The ability to pick up mines has also been added which is awesome. Though there are some restrictions as you'll see on screen. Now to come with these changes comes the nerf. Mines since the implementation have acted similar to how a magnetic mine would work. Where you didn't have to physically run over the pressure pad to detonate it. 
Now, tracks and wheels have to physically run over the mine, which means you can no longer block a single road off with one well-placed mine. You have to use multiple mines to be able to block off the roads. This isn't such a huge issue as the rearm cost has also been lowered from 50 to 35. All the changes collectively together are a nice big change. Mine placement means a lot more than it ever has and instead of a single mine being in the middle of the road we're now going to see well thought out mine clusters. Well, hopefully. Another positive is that one random blueberry squad is not going to be running over friendly mines all the time. It's still going to happen, they're still not going to check their map and that one time hey, you think it's not going to happen, it's going to happen. It's just blueberry things. Now for those combat engineer mains out there, this is probably a quite a bit of sweet patch for them. They're probably changes they didn't want to see but they had to happen. We do see a welcome buff for vehicles with the 14.5 KP VT. So let's go over the buffs. Its base damage has been increased by 50. The rate of fire has been increased from 400 to 600, so that's a 200 rate of fire increase and I believe that matches real life spec. It's also been slightly nerfed with a 0.8 MOA increase, meaning it's slightly less accurate across distance now. Its penetration has been increased by 5mm across 500m, and a much needed change. The amount of rounds it takes to overheat has been increased significantly. Before, it took 45 rounds and the gun would overheat. That's slightly less than a full mag. Now, it takes 2.25 mags to fully overheat. These buffs should increase your chances against things like the 82A and the Striker, but don't expect to go toe to toe unless the crewmen of the opposite vehicle are complete potatoes. A nice little quality of life change, where if the vehicle you're in is fully submerged and you're in an open seat, such as in the Samirs or an open top Humvee for example, you will pop out within a second or two. Now this removes the process of having to hold F to get out and it increases your survivability if you're close to land. The next thing to cover is something that caused up a little bit of a stir, the new compass. I understand people don't like change and a lot of people did find the little minor markings for bearings helpful. Me however, I didn't find them that useful. Precise bearing callouts are only useful if someone's right next to you and most of the time are irrelevant. The new compass also has quite a bit of improvement in visibility when it comes to bright surfaces. The drop shadows and even the new background, which you can disable by the way, improves the visibility by quite a bit. You can also change the location of the compass to the top of your screen. I think some more settings that could be useful is opacity and scaling. There is a high precision bearing mode that automatically enables when you hop on a mortar or inside of rocket techie. Which is where it is most important, it's not really useful for infantry so I like the change. However MTLBs and BRDMs with the rocket pods don't get this change. Previously. On the deployment menu, roll loadout and deploy were two separate things, now they have been merged into one. I've noticed that the information update for rolls is much quicker than what it was previously. Having the map reappear and disappear when moving off roll select is an interesting change but I like the minimalistic approach to it. The iron sights for the M249 have been pushed further away from the camera. This only affects the M249, not the Minami variants. The Scorpion has also received the same treatment and I'm happy for this because the sights were a bit too close to the camera view before. Now this just makes me want to see the old AK iron sights back too. Boats have received some adjustments too. They now have a little flag of the faction identifying them and the handling has been improved. A small rudder has been added to make it easier to do some sharp turns especially when you get closer to the shore. Do take note, pulling doughies and doing other sharp turns will slow the boat quite significantly. This is pretty much the end of the video, I've covered everything that I wanted to cover, hopefully you guys found it of some use, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.